We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Well, amen to that. Hey, good day and God bless. I'm Pastor Brian. I'm a creator's kid and you are too. Welcome once again to our unalienable program, uh, which we've been airing every Tuesday night here for the last, well, this would be the third week. We had special edition on Saturday night, uh, week before last, and thinking we might do that here again this week. We'll see how life goes, and if it's God's will, amen. Amen. Well, today we've got uh, an interesting topic, and with me once again is uh, guest uh, guest host, our uh, brother Pata. Uh, looks like he's getting ready. There he is. All right. Hey, amen. Hi, Pata. How are you doing tonight? Uh, I'm doing good, Pastor. How are we doing today? Fine. Fine, thanks. Yeah, nice awesome. to see you again. Yep, good to see you. <laughs> All right. Hey, let me try adjusting the screen here. There okay. we go. Everybody that looks better. Yeah, I got the, I got my hat on. You know, try to wear my own, uh, my own apparel. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Your, uh, <laughs> your, your merch is that your yeah, merch? That's right. Yeah. All um, right. All right. And uh, once again, where where can people uh, get that? And you want to show them a little bit? Yeah, they can. Um, they can go to prepperenglish.com. You know, we have uh, some emergency preparedness um, apparatus and supplies. There's some articles, some videos. We have some, um, you know, T-shirts and hats and, you know, all things related to, you know, liberty and freedom issues. And, yeah, so I think people might, uh, they, they, they might uh, find some good things there. Yeah, yeah. amen. I got yeah. the hoodie on. I'm wearing one of the hoodies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, see. amen. Oh, there you go, Prepper English. Yeah. PrepperEnglish.com. And uh, we got that uh, website in the description of the show below, too, so people can look there. Uh, just for my quick commercial to help support this program, you can see the scroll at the bottom there, uh, the HempWorks.com Creators Kit. If you're interested in the CBD wellness products uh, that I've been using, which helped me a lot, <laughs> Go there and, and check that out. So there's our commercials we got out of the way. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hey, today we've got a really exciting show. And uh, I'll say that because of the topic we're talking about. Um, this program basically is about our rights, our rights as Americans our rights as children of God, our unalienable rights, as we read from the Declaration of Independence there, which are God-given rights, cannot be taken or sold or uh, even volunteered away, protected by the Constitution. And um, one of the, well, old common law things that we're going to talk about, as I said, is really exciting today. And I guess I, I kind of wanted to make a, I was going to make a joke out of it, sort of, because just before we started, um, I was downstairs and my wife said, what time is your show again? And I said, it's seven o'clock. And she said, oh, what are you talking about? And I said, well, we're talking about Quo Warranto. <laughs> and she just looked at me and she said, sounds exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we've got a really exciting exciting topic here tonight um but actually it is um the the words quo warranto are, are latin and they refers to by what authority is the lawful meaning to that um 
Now we were talking about what topics we might like to uh, discuss on our program and to comment on this because we're part of another group I mentioned once before called the Happy Committee. And um, we call ourselves the Happy Committee because we're a group of people here in Pennsylvania who want people to see our smiles. <laughs> we want to breathe free without having to wear masks. And, you know, we still have this emergency health order here in Pennsylvania, which has been imposed on us by our governor uh, for, what, 10, 10 months now or, or 11 months almost. Um, so we're trying to think of ways we can uh, get rid of that. Um, and... You had the idea of trying to rid of Quo War and Co. So, uh, Pata, would you like to give me, uh, give us a little information about what you were thinking with that? Well, uh, I, um, yeah, well, you really sparked something in me, uh, Pastor, when you brought it up because I, it just reminded me of something that, um, that uh, some of the people that I was associated with back in 2000. Um, they were filing um, rid of uh, quo warrantos, and um, and so when you brought it up, I said, you know, um, when this whole coronavirus thing broke, uh, <clears throat> the first thing that came to my mind is like, by what authority <laughs> do they have to do this? But the writ of quo warranto is is uh, is one of the most powerful common law writs, um, and a writ being an order it means an order, and. Um, uh, so I mean, it, you can you can trace it back to around 1274 AD, um, and we know the 12 uh, the Magna Carta was around 1215 AD. So this right. is around the time of like King Edward the uh, first, mm -hmm. and it's powerful in the sense that um, it challenged the, the 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 monarch's authority, you know, in and of itself. So um, that's very audacious, very audacious, and uh, you know, very very bold. And that's something unheard of, you know, to be able to challenge the king or challenge the monarch. So it, it was a, it's a beautifully, uh, 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 you know, beautiful idea um, just from its inception alone. Um, so uh, the, um, the 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 fact that not only could you challenge uh, the authority of the king uh, in any of his edicts or his mandates or his orders uh, or his proclamations, but um, his hirelings or um, his his underlings as well, you know, uh, barons and and um, landlords, you know, and so the the writ was powerful in the sense that it could, ch it could challenge the um, the authority of uh, anybody under the king as well. So, yeah, basically someone with a title or holding yeah. an office, or an office or franchise, authority. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It, it 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 can challenge the it would challenge the ability to it to to challenge the authority of anybody from the king on down. So, you know, um, the legitimacy of the office, um, the 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 what whether the the person had the actual uh, authority um, uh, in and of itself to to rule or to do any type of action. So mm -hmm. um, that's very very powerful. So powerful that. Um, when you read about it, they say, oh, it's obsolete mm -hmm. <laughs> because right. it was associated with common law or they'll, you know, now they, they use the term of, they say, well, it's not really a writ of quo warranto anymore. It's, it's a, you have to say, a, you know, information in the nature of, <laughs> you know, yeah. that's what they do when they say information in the nature of, it's almost like it's a kind of, and it's sort of like it, they, they, it takes the teeth out and then they limit it to only civil matters you know okay okay like, and i was i was sort of noticing that when i was looking up information on it yeah. myself and i i spoke to another counselor i i know about this and he kind of gave me the same sort of idea on it yeah um, one thing i noticed you corrected my pronunciation of it you said quo or Quo Waranto. Yeah, I say Waranto. <laughs> yeah, I said Quo Waranto. But yeah, but it's, it's been <laughs> probably it's, both wrong. Yeah, but it's, 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 well, it might you know, be right. Yeah, yeah, it can actually, uh, you, you can actually pronounce it like uh, Waranto. I say Waranto, like, you know, Warrant, Waranto. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah. But like yeah. a warrant. Right. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, authority, basically. Um, sure. Well, I've got a couple of websites and things we can look at here. I thought maybe we would read a little bit about it, talk about it, let people see and, and hear what, what we're talking about, all right? Sure. Let me see if I can uh, share a screen. Um, do you have me on speakerphone there? Yeah, can you hear me? Or? Yeah, it's kind of buzzing back at us a bit here. Okay. Um, so just thought I'd bring that up. I'm going to try to, uh, okay, we're sharing screen here. Okay. I'm going to ask you uh, once we do if you can see here. All right, are you able to see this? I can see it, yeah. Okay, good. Uh, let me make a little bit bigger then. All right, and uh, you actually gave me this link here uh, from Team Law, Team TeamLaw.net, and it says uh, "Quo Waranto." It says though the Latin phrase "Quo Waranto" means "by what authority," it is also the title of one of the most ancient and important original styles of remedial court actions inherent to any sovereign. You were sort of talking about that. Including, but not limited to, each of the people in the United States. So it's saying here that each individual man or woman, one of the people, uh, has this power or this right to bring the, a court action, basically, along these lines said it is the ultimate means the people have to limit officials to acting within the confines of the authority lawfully provided them through their office. Quo Waranto is generally executed through a writ or related court order. Um, what is your understanding of a writ? What, is, what does that mean? Well, a writ is uh, synonymous with the word order, okay. you know, and so, um, you know, uh, anybody can create or craft a writ um, or an order. And mm -hmm. so um, under common law, you know, it was accessible to, you know, the common people, you know. Um, <clears throat> now, some of the barons and some of the people who were privileged, uh, you know, obviously could, you know, would have a little bit more um, entitlements than, say, a serf or, you know, someone who worked on the land and, and, and who pretty much did not have any ownership of, of, of property and, and, and did not enjoy some of the rights um, that the, you know, people who were in a higher position and, and had, high, had more entitlements. Um, but it was something that, you know, uh, even the king on, uh, for the most part, uh, felt that he had to have an ear to listen to the people because the people would, um, you know, complain to the king that, hey, you know, the barons and the landlords were being a little oppressive and um, they weren't doing things uh, according to your rule. Um, they were acting outside of the rules. So, um, you know, we, you know, we need to, uh, <laughs> you know, we need to have a discussion because, you know, we want to kick up some dust about uh, some of the infractions that were um, coming down even from your, you know, your hirelings. Yeah, 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 okay. So, so the order is real powerful. The king understood that. And uh, so, you know, the, the chancellor, the whole idea of chancery, which is like the courts of equity, uh, oh, yeah. came from the notion of a chancellor. And that was sort of like the conscience of the king, you know, because obviously the king could not, you know, uh, uh, you know, field all the requests from the people in the kingdom. Um, so he had a chancellor, you know, that would be able to take the request, act, act as a middleman. And so eventually that turned into the chancery courts in around, you know, the 12th century. Um, so the, it was, it was the, the willingness of the king to kind of hear the complaints of the people, you know, and yeah. that's why orders are powerful. So that, so that, or the order and the writ would, you know, would get back to the king at some point um, when they had the chancellor in place. All right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Um, I'm playing with the screen here while you're talking. I'm sorry. If okay. that's, uh, oh, no problem. Distracting anyone. 
Um, I thought we'd look at this a little bit more. That thanks, yeah. thanks for that. That that's a uh, real interesting and it's important background information uh, because when you're talking about king, who is also known as the sovereign um, and his subjects, well, people <laughs> were taking on and asserting some of their own rights uh, through the Magna Carta, and that's a whole long. That's a long, interesting history, too. But the whole idea is that when this country, our country, was created, um, we, the people, became the sovereign. We took over that position of power. And each one of us individually is a sovereign person. In other words, there's no one above any one of us. Um, I want, we're looking here at this uh, page still some more. If you look at the second paragraph here, uh, near the bottom, it says, respectively, the government cannot lawfully interfere with the right to quo oranto. Accordingly, the inherent right is irrevocable, ongoing, and cannot be lawfully obviated by any legislative act. So they can't even pass a law saying you can't use this. <laughs> they, 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 at least not, uh, they can't pass a code or a policy or a statute saying that this is null and void, right? It says, uh, thus, where all authority in government comes from the people, quo warranto remains a right retained by the people to ask by what authority. That's and right. the respect of writ of quo warranto is the remedial instrument used by the courts to remove any official from office when that official is through quo warranto found to have violated the privilege of that office by acting absent of or in contradiction to the authority of that office. One last thing here, it says, in the United States, the right with its respective writ are reserved to the people through the Ninth and Tenth Amendments. That's right. No. Uh, let's get back here to to our picture here. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, well stated, well said. Yeah, amen. And, and but the court but the, the 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 states have in fact done that to, through the legislature. They have put in a uh, they have put a straitjacket on the on those writs. You know, um even saying that it's obsolete, you know, it's 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 really not used anymore and it, it must be invoked with uh you know sound discretion um you must be careful uh it has to be information and in the nature of <laughs> so um they have like for instance in pennsylvania um you, you know of course you would follow that the proto notary uh, uh it, it, but it, it it's, it's only civil it's civil based and mm -hmm. um the, and there's no there's no there's no jury trial so, I mean, you know, they, they, they're, you know, they, they like to move the goalposts. <clears throat> yeah. And, yeah. And can you yeah. see this here? Uh, this yeah. is what you're talking about. I think, uh, Pennsylvania code. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Uh, I believe it's action. one, 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 three. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Title 231, uh, says chapter 1000, um, this subchapter here says action in quo waranto. Um, first one, rule 1111, which is an interesting number, mm -hmm. um, says conformity to civil action. So here, yeah, they're changing it to civil action under their code, or at least they're trying to, or they set up something like it in their code says, except as otherwise provided in this chapter, the procedure in the action of quo wardens for the rules relating to civil action. Okay, so that's what you were talking about, right? That's right. That's correct. All right. Um, so what do you think they're trying to get at with that? 
Well, again, it's a, it's an attempt to put a straight jacket on it to, to to knock the teeth out of the power to rip because it's it's extremely extremely effective when it is used properly. And 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 you know, it's like it's like it calls for it calls for the the really the 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 challenging of the, the the authority, and so it the action would have to be taken even by the government for the most part. And it's right. It, it's not almost. It's like it's not likely to happen for them to kind of, you know, move on themselves, if you will, you know. And then that's where the frustration comes in that with following such a powerful writ, because you know we you, you we would want somebody who is sympathetic to the Constitution, to our state Constitution, and of course to our federal Constitution. And um, it just seems like they're all, you know, we're not a part of their club. So, right. um, you know, the um, the reluctance to really enforce the, the that writ uh, and honor it is um, is is, you know, leaves a lot to be desired. Right. And I want to I figured I'd look at a couple other things sort of along those lines, too. But I I wanted to get back to um, what you were hoping or thinking to accomplish through this. Um, how are you envisioning that it would be used and what would you hope that we could uh, have as an outcome or a remedy from it? Well, I think that we, I think we the people, we have to demand, we have to demand you know, access to the courts to demand, you know, that, you know, that common law remedy that mm -hmm. in fact that we can use and, and, you know, and move forward with this writ, you know, in its purest form, you know, um, and with its original intent, you know, and yeah. purpose. And yeah. so once the people get informed as, you know, as to how powerful it is and the fact that, you know, we have access to the courts, we don't have to be a member of the bar or, you know, they try to say, well, the prosecutor is the one that can bring the claim on behalf of the people. Or maybe there's a statute that could allow you, you know, if you, sh if you should be so lucky and privileged, they may allow a private person to use it, but it must be you know, in the uh, information, uh, information in the nature of, you know, and it must be specifically tailored towards civil matters only. And when we we've, we've been locked down for like eleven months now, mm -hmm. and um, let me tell you something, it's, it, there's been some irreparable harm here. You know, yeah, like amen. We, okay. <laughs> I'm I'm asking for blood at this point. I mean, we're like hang them high. You know, it's I mean, this <laughs> yeah. is really. Like, I mean, businesses have been destroyed. Families have been destroyed. People have died. I know. It's not funny. You know? Yeah, and, it, it, I mean, it's really like, bad. And to relegate it to a civil matter, it's almost, it, it, is, it is a cruel joke to, for it, you know, to only honor it as a, as a civil, in, in a civil sense, mm -hmm. you know, because um, I'm, I'm sorry, there's no amount of money uh, that could cover the type of damages and the pain and the tragedy and the, and, 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 you know, the suffering. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So, um, along getting, keeping on that line of thinking, um, what we're thinking about using this for is to end the emergency order in the state. That's right. Somehow. All right. Um, it sounds like this quo warranto is normally used uh, against a specific person or individual or office that's either illegitimate or uh, abusing their power or not doing something that they're supposed to do. Is that right? That's right. Okay. So would you be thinking about... Uh, say bringing this against a specific office or kind of individual, is that the way you would take it? Yeah, if you can. Different? It can be. Yeah, it's flexible because it can be used against an office. Like let's say uh, the attorney's, the attorney's office or whatever. It can be used in that sense. It can be used for the treasurer, the state treasurer. You know, mm -hmm. um, it can be used to challenge the the health department of Pennsylvania. You know, okay. those health orders. Yes. And so, okay. you know, we're saying by what authority and see, they don't have the authority. So what they what what they're trying to do now is to, they want to get that injunction and have the court like the, you know, the Commonwealth Court enforce it because they know they can't enforce it. They don't have the legal authority to um, to enforce anything, you know, so they'll, that's why they'll put up like placards like, you know, like the 
the liquor control uh, entities and the, mm-hmm. the, you know, all the, the people from the health department, they'll put up placards and they'll, you know, it's almost like a paper tiger where they're scaring you, you know, given yeah. the appearance that they can do harm, but they, they really don't have it because there's no law for one um, right. that says that you, you know, that, uh, you know, that you, you, you can't open your store or you can't operate or you have to wear a mask or you have to socially distance. There's nothing and the laws to enforce. <laughs> so, I mean, when the sheriffs come out or, you know, the, the officials come out and say, hey, you got to close your store or, you know, or we can take your license or we can do this. And it's like, well, what are you enforcing? You know what I mean? You're enforcing a mandate, which is which is not law. So, um, you know, I mean, this is they're acting under the color of law, under the color of authority, under the color of jurisdiction. Yeah. OK, yeah. So we have to hold so so the idea would be to use this in a powerful way to uh, get attention and yes. uh, hopefully take it as, as far as we can in that way. Um, yeah. I, I thought I thought I'd uh, bring up a uh, show an example or two here uh, where this uh, was, was uh, used or uh, attempted to be used here. Let me. OK, yeah, here's. Here's one. Let me uh, let me bring this up here. This was a uh, case in Lehigh County, I think. Lehigh County. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, here we go. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I United States it. District Court of. Eastern District of Pennsylvania here. Um, Now you can see it's plaintiff defendant, so it's a civil action, like you were talking about. But this was specifically brought, and I was reading this earlier, this was specifically brought by someone who was in jail or or in prison. Yeah. Um, And... He was using it to against the probation and parole agents, saying they should be removed from office for right. failing to have their oaths of office properly filed. And because he felt that they were overstepping their power in, in some dealings with him. So... This is one way that it was recently used or attempted here in Pennsylvania. Um, Reading through this particular case, and uh, it's right here. Anyone could look it up if they want to. Um, There were issues about um, some of the notices and the mailings getting sent back and not on time and all that. And yeah. it didn't go as well as they, they hoped it would. And they had to kind of go a different route. But um, it was it was attempted here and looked like it might have had some effect other than the process got kind of messed up, it looked like. So I just wanted to show that here. Um, Here is another thing I found uh, from Florida, uh, legal opinion of the attorney general on quo veranto, or the the right to public office. Um, And this says it's used to test a person's legal right to hold an office, not to evaluate the person's performance in the office. For example, a quo warranto action may be brought to determine whether a public official satisfies a requirement that he or she resides in the district, or whether a public official is serving in two incompatible offices, or not eligible for for that. Um, But this is a legal opinion of an attorney general, um, and is trying to do basically what you were talking about, uh, trying to take some of the teeth out of it. And this says, how does a quo warranto action get filed? They say, he says, a quo warranto action may not be filed without the approval of the attorney general. (laughs) Yeah. 
except in those cases where a public agency is authorized to file for itself, you know, as a person, right? A legal fiction. <laughs> yeah. Um, it does say the remedy of Quo Veronto is, written, is vested in the people, um, but then he goes back to say, but you must have the attorney general's approval <laughs> to be able to do it. So, yeah. Um, the, it's really in, it's really vested. The authority is vested in him. <laughs> he's yeah. saying, you know, not the people, right. and and that's also what I was hearing um, before, um, or from my other friend uh, counselor that that basically uh, a judge would have to accept it or sign it. Sure. And that in most cases, they won't do it. Right. You know, mm. it's almost like you can, you know, and in turn, you, you follow a writ, a, a quorum against the, the attorney general. <laughs> you know, it's like. <laughs> right, uh, right. But, yeah, you know, but you could. <laughs> because the, I mean, that's, yeah. that's the kind of thing that it's supposed to be used for. Yeah, I mean, because he's it's saying. Use the patient. Yeah, patient he's saying if you're going to file a quorum against me. I yeah. have to approve it. Right. <laughs> right. That it's like the, the fox guarding the hen house and you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and so I mean, remember, we the people, we're the highest authority, you know, and yeah. these guys are like, you know, our servants. And I mean, and, and when you talk about the attorney class, please don't get me started on that again because I mean, yeah. you know, they, they have no authority. I mean, in fact, that's that's one of the power to writ of of of, of Quo Veronto because it's like you know by what authority you know are you to have just monopoly over the legal system you know you you let's look at your office and you have a license you have a license let me see your license where does your authority come from who who um who granted you this charter to create this bar association you see what I mean we can we can yep. really go we can really get creative with this and um, they're all supposed to have uh, oaths. Of yeah. office signed and filed, uh, which that guy was talking about with the probation parole officers. Yeah, uh, they're supposed to be bonded yeah. and be able to show that, right? That's right. Um, yeah. A lot of them cannot. Yeah, <laughs> or and or will not. Right. Well, most of the and I know, like in the cities, like I've, I when I lived in Philadelphia, they had, um, and I, I guess most jurisdictions um, have that they had a risk management. Um, department, you know, uh, in the municipality. So the risk management um, department dealt with the bonds. You know, they insured the office that um, the uh, these these act state actors or city, you know, state actors were holding. Um, <clears throat> but um, um, but of course, when we tried to you know claim that bond, <laughs> they were not trying to get that up. You know, yeah. Once oh, we found great. out, yeah, that many of them didn't even have oaths of office on file. Um, right. Mm -hmm. It's so so many other disturbing things that I probably don't want to go into right now. If, maybe for a later time, just right. pretty much proving that the this whole charade called government is not the de jure government; it is the de facto government. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's um, why they hate the idea of common law. Or when you mention that writ, you know, they oh, it's obsolete. Oh, it, you can only be used like this. You know. They want to kind of move the goalposts or they want to put it, you know, in a straitjacket so that you, you know, so it so it takes the effect, the force and effect of its power. Right. You know, so it's it's really sad. But that's why I say once we get informed, we can demand like, hey, you know, you have to, you know, honor this. You know, we're moving forward. You know, mm -hmm. I command you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, know, you mentioned yeah. Um, de jure. And de facto, uh, yeah. in relation to the government, de jure basically means like the original, right? Right, the legitimate government. Legitimate original. Versus uh, the government, in fact, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah. de facto is like acting uh, right. government, right? Exactly. It's it's like the, the give the appearance of government. <laughs> it's no different than, mm -hmm. you know, me going down to the... Um, the costume shop and putting on a, you know, policeman's uniform with the badge and everything and pulling over a car, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and asserting authority, you know, and, and people say, hey, can I see your badge? Can I see your badge number? And it turns out that I'm not 
you know, the real state trooper or the real police officer. So mm-hmm. mm, this is what's happening, you know, pretty much. Right. It isn't really all that far off from what you're talking about. Yeah. I mean, we've proven it too. I, I mean, there are court cases and stuff like that, but they kind of like infer it because they're not going to come out and say, oh, yeah, you know what? You're right. We were wrong. You know, we were taking <laughs> your rights away and uh, we're the bad guys. You're the good guys. We were lying to you all along. So, but there are just certain cases where, you know, in some of our cases, they just dismissed, you know, because they didn't want the court stenographer to enter that on the record, what they were doing. So in some cases, they just dismiss, you know, once they saw the filings, in the brief, they said, oh, they didn't want that smoke. So they just said, case dismissed. Mm. But some of the mistakes mistakes that we made, we ran out and said, hey, see, look, it works. You know, and mm. it wasn't really proof that it worked. It was just proof that they weren't trying to expose the whole fraud. <laughs> you know? Oh, right, right. You know, so there is no, mm-hmm. yeah, there's no, there's no magic bullet. People think that they can go in there and have this, you know, use, use all this legal, you know, jujitsu and, 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 and they can get, you know what they want out of the court but i mean each jurisdiction is different each judge is different you're dealing with different temperament and mm-hmm. um they can railroad you you know at you know at, on whimsically so yeah there is so no one careful, set way but... there's no one perfect way i don't care how many years you have been doing this for those that say hey i've got all these years it's going to work every jurisdiction is different you don't know what you're facing when you get in those star chambers right Right. Uh, there are things I understand that can be done up front and ahead of time and right off the bat when you get into a court and um, having to do with jurisdiction and what form of law that you're operating in. Yeah. Stating you can do it different ways, like uh, filing a an affidavit sure. um, a, of status. Yeah, saying that you only recognize the common law and that's what yeah. you're operating in. And then, but then you have to say that and enforce that and know how sure. to. That's um, right. But I, I bring that up because if, if we or someone were to utilize this writ of quo pro um, for something like we're talking about possibly yeah. doing, um, it would have to be. Uh, done through the common law. We could not allow them to take it as an action, as a civil yeah. action, That's as right. what's showing there. That's right. Um, it would not, I don't think it would be a petition or a motion, no. right? No. No. The common law is always acceptable. Yeah, they and, cannot supplant. They mm-hmm. cannot supplant the common law. They cannot hide it. You know, it's still there. It will always be there. You can just right. read the Seventh Amendment to the Constitution. Mm-hmm. So it's not, they can't bring statutory admiralty equity, you know, onto our shores. Um, the common law is, will always be there. You just have to access it and you have to demand it. Like, this is my venue. This is where the court sits at. And, um, you know, and we're, we're going to proceed, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, that, that should be done and stated too yeah. in the document or the written sure. itself. That's right. Yeah. They're correcting so, the presumption because they're moving, everything they're doing is they're moving off a of presumption. They're presuming that you are their subjects. You are, you know, uh, you know, a person, you're an artificial being. So they're presuming that. And so unless you raise your hands, excuse me, let me correct that. Correction, objection, mm-hmm. you know, they're going to move against you. You know, right. so that's why it's important for everybody to, to be a belligerent claimant. You have to stand up. You got to raise your hand. You have to say object. You have to say, I do not consent. Hey, that's not me. You know, and, mm-hmm. and, and, and so once you correct that record and, you know, you can you can get your country back. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, and uh, in future programs, I would like to go into that more yeah. on how to handle individual uh individual cases and such. But um, again, uh, moving along with this uh, quo waranto idea, um, one would need to figure out um, how one would actually file this, um, what it would say, um, how it would be moved into effect without being 
an action or a petition or a motion or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So that's like yeah. the key thing, yeah. it seems like to me, that if you could properly do that, yeah, um, then you wouldn't have to rely on a judge signing it and giving permission or the attorney general mm -hmm. accepting it because yeah. you as a man, you as the authority, the sovereign yeah. who, who delegates authority to the government is the one bringing this. That's right. Which is really the whole original idea. <laughs> sure. Right? That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. yeah. Um, in fact, I did find one other page that really kind of goes along that way. Let me let me find that here and share that again too here. Just a second. This one here. Okay, Quo Waranto. This says a writ of Quo Waranto is not a petition, but a notice of demand issued by a demandant to a respondent claiming some delegated power and filed with a court of competent jurisdiction mm -hmm. to hold a hearing within three to 20 days, depending on the distance of the respondent to the court, to present proof of his authority to execute his claimed powers. If the court finds the proof insufficient, which the respondent or the person holding the position has to prove, you know, if the court finds that proof insufficient, or if the court fails to hold the hearing, the respondent must cease to exercise the power. If the power is to hold an office, he must vacate the office. All right. So that's showing some real power there. Yeah. Um, it goes on to say, the writ is unlike a petition or motion to show cause because the burden of proof is on the respondent, there you go. not the demandant. Right. By itself, the writ does not seek the support of the court to order the respondent to cease the exercise or vacate the office. That would be an accompanying, accompanying writ of prohibito or writ of mandamus. All such writs contemplate enforcement by the people as militia, although that could include the sheriff or constable as commander of militia. So you could get a sheriff involved here. Right? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Yep, the right involved is that of the respondent to present his evidence. And I'll go here and finish that, and then we can talk about it. Um, these writs are called prerogative writs because they are supposed to be docketed ahead of all other cases except other prerogative writs. The demandant represents the sovereign, the people, and anyone may appear in that capacity, even without a personal stake in the decision. And then it talks about habeas corpus can be regarded that way too, but that's something else. Yeah. So this right here, this is the common law version, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and, and because to, remember the, the sheriff is the most powerful uh, person in the county, the most, the most powerful uh, law enforcement, um, um, you know, uh, inhabitant in the county. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you can get the fire up under him to get things moving, that's, that's a win. Um, unfortunately, a lot of sheriffs, as you know, um, have been in lockstep with the, the mainstream narrative with, with, this, with respect to this COVID-19. So right. the, the challenge, of course, was to get the sheriffs on board to um, uphold their duties, their, their, their oaths, and to um, enforce the real law. You know, yeah. um, our Pennsylvania uh, Constitution, as you know, uh, goes back to 1776, older than the national <laughs> uh, federal one. So, um, so our Declaration of Rights is, you know, is, you know, we were one of the original parties. Um, mm -hmm. 
So and so that's why we have to to uh, hold hold that dear to us. And and it, you know, so when they come up with these consolidated statues and revised statues, and you know, <laughs> it's almost like they want to trump or contravene all of the um, you know the earlier uh, you know amendments and rights that were ensconced um, in our sacred uh, letter of the law. Okay. Um, well, let's see. Let's keep going along this line because, uh, first of all, it says that you can get a sheriff uh, or perhaps a constable to help enforce this. Yeah. All right. Uh, so if you were going to do it, you probably would want to have a couple different sheriffs in mind uh, who, who might. Okay. Especially if you're talking about doing something on a state level. Yeah. Um, you know, that's taken forward through a county, for example. Yeah. Um, but again, it says a writ of quo warranto is not a petition. It's a notice of demand that's right. issued by a demandant. Okay. Then it says, and filed with the court of competent jurisdiction. Okay, what does that mean? Uh -huh. jurisdiction. That's the key word is mm -hmm. competent jurisdiction, you know, and, and, right. and, and see now for me, if you ask me what a competent jurisdiction is, I would say, oh, that would be an article three court. Okay. That common law. You mm -hmm. see, their, mm -hmm. their competent uh, jurisdiction might be sort of like an article one administrative. Court. Yeah. And that's what most of them are. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, and that's what the civil action quo warranto would be moved ahead through. Right. right? Until yeah. they say, no, we're not going to sign it. And then it's done. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh -huh. I mean, it'd be great, ideally, to get the, the, the writ to go through. And then, you know, the civil action would stop the, the, stop the lockdowns, for instance. And then they could be criminally liable, <laughs> you know, for... Um, you know, for, for damages incurred and, and the pain and tragedy that they inflicted upon us for mm -hmm. the past 11, month, 11 months. And so you can move on that level on the criminal um, uh, element. So, okay. you know, yeah. So you got civil on one hand, just stop the, the lockdowns and the mandates. And then on the other hand, you can still get them, um, you know, even in their personal and private capacity um, and, 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 and get, get a criminal um you know, yeah, uh, so you could really try it either way. You could take yeah. the civil action way if you yeah. thought that you had a good chance of finding yeah, because they're, they're not gonna, yeah, or if you had a good if you had a good argument and yeah. a judge who might be um compassionate yeah. <laughs> and willing to listen to you who understands what you're saying, but yeah. still you'd be kind of dependent on their approval, wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, most most of the writs of quo uh, generally move in in a, in a civil uh, of fashion. Uh, it's just yeah. funny how the you know the modern um, version of it, you know, they just kind of just restrict it to the civil, um, and like as though you have no other remedy, you know, mm -hmm. outside of civil. And you know, and for like I said, for what we've gone through, uh, clearly we would have an option outside of civil as far as um, taking action. So once That's you prove correct. that their office is, is you know, is um, is illegal, it's unauthorized, and their actions they're, they're are also, there's a usurpation of office, a usurpation of the franchise. And then it's like, now you can be criminally held responsible. So, mm. yeah. yeah. Um, okay. but, but getting people informed and even getting the sheriffs on board and the people, um, that, that, would, that would go a long way in turning things around and yeah. and you, you what you said was key there criminal because yeah. crime when you're talking about the common law yeah. uh needs an injured party yeah. which there clearly is <laughs> in what we're talking about Ooh. and you would have to have uh, a man against them bringing some a claim against a man or a woman That's you right. know not yeah. A person, not a corporation, yeah. not a legal victim. Right. Um, so again, I kind of want to get back to um, if one were going to um, do this notice of demand, um, file it with a court of competent jurisdiction, you would want to get it 
right off the bat um, as a common law writ sure. that you're bringing forward. Um, yeah. Not allow them to even try to consider it as a civil action. You have to have it spelled out sure. in in the document, I would guess, and make sure that you file it the right way sure. in the court of competent jurisdiction. Um, so let's say we we figured out how to properly uh, word this, um, which which can be done and then most likely take it to a county recorder's office. Um, but that's where it gets tricky. You have to yeah. know how to get it filed in the proper way sure. in the proper jurisdiction, right? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, um, uh, now, according to the Pennsylvania statutes, <coughs> wherever the offending party was, they they're trying to restrict the action into that you know political subdivision you know mm -hmm. like if it happened in lehigh county then you would file it in the common pleas court mm -hmm. um in lehigh county you know yeah okay. so yeah so i mean those are the things we you know you have to look out for um to know exactly where you know, what venue you you know um the offense took place and how you're going to proceed. See, in Pennsylvania, all of the counties, all 67 counties, any you can file anywhere, you know, mm -hmm. um, in, any, in any clerk of court there. And it, it could apply to, uh, if we're talking about the health department, so that's any county, you know. That's right, if that's what I, yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, but, but you're also saying, we are saying that if you're gonna do this, you have to do it as, a, a man or woman, you have to, yeah. one of the people be right. bringing it forward as the demandant. That's right. Um, and you're going to have to show um, something that you say is abuse of power sure. or improper. Um, and then if it's done properly, they're going to have to prove that they were doing it properly. Yeah. Um, That's right. And do you think in that case you're going to have to have an individual, um, an actual injury or uh, something that you are bringing forward with your with your claim or your demand, saying that this uh, the person or this office injured me? by not allowing me to work. And so I wasn't able to access my any health insurance and I got sick sure. or I couldn't pay my mortgage and I lost my house. Yeah, oh yeah. It be done that way? It would have, to, well, you know, in the, in the case of a writ though, you know, again, you know, it's not something that you, you know, would really have to show. They, they, okay. they have to bring forth, you know, the, the, their legitimate um, reason to exist. All right. As an office, so know, it's not really like a common. Service. It's not really like a claim. It's not really no, it's like not a, a claim at all. Tort. Yeah, yeah. It'd be something, something above that. They, they have to show and prove. They have to show and prove who they are. You know, they have to show and prove yeah. their legitimacy. Okay, yeah. okay, and see that that would be key. Um, so you're not. So I'm not required to show damage necessarily <laughs> absolutely if i can just state it yeah. uh, in an affidavit which would make it fact until right. they can prove otherwise right remember what the name is it's called quo Veranto. by what authority by what you know authority I mean? are so you doing it's, this it's biased on them you know it's it's on them to show that what we're asking for, we're asking for, we're demanding, you know, like what we used to say, uh, that, you know, because I come from a military family, say, where are your marching orders? Hmm. That's yeah. essentially what you're saying. Show me your marching orders. Where are your marching orders? You know, I mean, they can't turn around and say, well, why? Where, where's the damage? How, how, how is it hurting you? No, I asked you, hmm. where are your marching orders? Don't turn around and ask me if I got wounded. I'm asking you, where are your marching orders? That's what the writ is. You know, where are your marching orders? You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're my servant. Yeah. And you only operate 
uh, through my delegation of authority. To That's you. right. All right. So I'm here to demand of you your legitimacy. <laughs> isn't, that right? beautiful? isn't that beautiful, though? Pastor? Yeah. Well, it is. And that is the way it's supposed to work. Yeah. You know, I mean, we could, well, I mean, we can mention some, some great, uh, you know, chapters and verses in the Bible. <laughs> that would oh, yeah. Oh, the, you know? the best, the best things oh, put man. forward in affidavits and, and in court have Leviticus, you know, <laughs> things from the books of the law, you know, <laughs> stuff like yeah. that, 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 that really can't be disputed because yeah. you know, our whole system's based on it. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, you know, I, I know who my master is, you know, and it's, right. it's certainly it's certainly not Governor Wolf, you know, mm -hmm. or any and of his um, hirelings. Uh, yeah. We're and we're putting forth or and henchmen. enforcing our unalienable rights. Yeah, that's uh, right. As people who are supposed to be taken care of or served by these people, not used and abused and injured by them, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, we've, you know, I mean, you know, we've we've got them I always say we've we've got you surrounded, you know, like they used to say in the in the police shows on TV. We've mm -hmm. got you surrounded literally. Yeah. You know, yeah. not just with the law but with the people, you know, um once we stand up and we say no more, you know, it's like um, you know, it's like snapping our fingers. You know? For the most yep. part, I mean, literally, like a king, snap your fingers and you can get things done. I mean, it's amazing the power that you have with them when you exercise it. You have to know that you have it, you know. You have to know that you have it, yeah. and you have to uh, know how to enforce it, how to that's right, move how to exercise the court, how to present something in there, and what to say and what not to say is just yeah. as important. Just as important. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And not, yeah, not to let them, uh, you know, exercise authority over you. That's right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. So that's a beautiful thing, man. And and so, I mean, I will fight to my, you know, last dying breath, you know, to um, stand up for these uh, unalienable rights, you know. And um, it's a beautiful thing. And and so uh, I know where I'm at. I know what venue I, 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 I'm in. You know, I know who I am and um, and I know how to, um, you know, claim what's mine, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. They, they can't gaslight, you know, they can't gaslight me, you know, into making me think that um, something's wrong with me or uh, I'm doing something wrong or maybe I've got it backwards. No, mm -hmm. man. I know exactly where my country is. I know where it can be found, you know, and I know who, and I know who I am and I know my power. And so yeah. you know, I'm here to exercise it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And I think in uh, upcoming shows, we uh, should look at that a little more closely and kind of try to give people maybe a, an example of doing that, say, in a traffic court case or yeah. just something, some simple action that's brought yeah. against you by a borough or a county or something. Sure. sure. How, how, you, how you do that, because there are a uh, good number of people who can and do these things. Oh, yeah. um, in fact, we heard about some of it the other night in our uh, Zoom call with the Happy Committee, and I've been looking into that a little bit. So I, I'm interested in following up on that. Um, but again, this Quo Waranto uh, idea would possibly moving forward to address these emergency orders that have been imposed on us for so long by one or two um, positions in particular, um, we should think about it more. And um, if we do or are able to move ahead with that in any way, may, we'll come back and give an update at a future date. But we really wanted just to bring up this topic, this subject, because any one of you, any one of us can use this um, to question by what authority are you doing this? And they have to prove it. They have to show it. 
That's so, right. Yeah, so you all have some homework now is to look yeah, right? up all of us do of all, what we're on to all of us do. That's right. And and mm -hmm. and, and the people know anybody's listening to this, they know that they you know, it's all about updating and correcting each other. You know, we make amendments. That's the beauty of the Constitution, because we're here to make amendments. You know, even when we make a mistake or we, we say something, don't take our word for it. Correct us, update, and then, you know, so that we can make it more of a perfect, you know, a perfect strategy, a perfect union. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, well, it's it's uh, we're at the one hour mark here. Um I see in our uh, chat room, uh, Fire for Righteousness. He says, hi, Pastor Brian and Pata. <laughs> hi, how are you doing? I'm glad you found us here. Um, yeah. As you, as you notice, we're doing this live broadcast on my own personal YouTube channel um, because I wasn't able to do it on the Quantum Super channel. Uh, we've got a strike against us over there. I think we talked mm. about the Constitution and our rights too much. <laughs> and uh, they put a strike against us, and so can't uh, none of us over there are able to broadcast live right now. So we're all doing it at different places. But I'm going to put this up on the Quantum Super Channel page uh, either later tonight or or tomorrow, early tomorrow. Um, so it will be there for a lot more people to see. But um, thank you all for for being here for watching this recording, whatever. I I hope we gave you something to think about, something to research, because this is your power. This is our power, we the people. We can use it to uh, stop abuses of power in our de facto so-called government. Amen, Pata? Amen. Amen. Do you have any uh, last thought or comment to, to make before we go or i mean you know all i can say is um i encourage everybody to just study 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 i'm i i never stop reading you know i've been reading since i was mm. five, five years old and, yeah. and you still don't know nothing you know you think you know something and guess <laughs> what you don't know a damn thing <laughs> you, know, you still have so much more to i can learn. adjust so to that <laughs> you have to be humble this is a humbling experience this yeah. journey that we call life mm-hmm Oh, I, I actually preached about that a little bit in church on Sunday from James yes. 4. And boy, it comes down to you got to humble yourself before the Lord and right. he will lift you up. Amen. Yeah. He Amen. gives us these unalienable rights and he will help us assert them and defend them if we look to him and do our due diligence. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, that's it for tonight. Uh Another unalienable program here. Uh, maybe back on Saturday night. I'd like to do that. If not, for sure, uh, every Tuesday at 7 p.m., either here or the Quantum Super Channel. Uh, and we'll put it up on my huge, huge tube channel also, which you see uh, in the comments, and my BitChute channel, too. So you'll be able to find us, and we'll be back. So... God bless you. Hey, Pata, God bless you. Thanks again for God bless you. us. God bless you, Pastor. Thanks for having me again. And God bless everybody out there. God bless this republic. Amen. 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 All right. well. Good night. Good night. Well, thank you all, too, for uh, for being here and for, for joining us on another unalienable program. I'm Pastor Brian. I'm a creator's kid, and you are, too. God bless.